Today on the table I have the Ruger Wrangler and the Heritage Rough Rider. If you're looking for an affordable 22 long rifle, single action, this video is for you. So how do these compare? We're looking at about a $45 price split. The Ruger being about $45 more than the Heritage. Is that $45 worth it or is it just extra money spent out there on a name? Kind of like a Glock where you're paying for the reputation. Yeah, nowadays basically all firearms are reliable as a Glock, but Glock did it first. So you have to pay for the reputation. Or is the Ruger Ra Rough Rider, <laughs> is the Ruger Wrangler really worth $45 more than the Heritage? Wait, they're almost the exact same. Now the Ruger has no external safety. This is your safety right here. The Heritage does have a little safety right there. This thing is garbage. I'm telling you, if you buy this, this thing is going to get you at one point in time or another. It gets everyone. It just... It's made out of plastic. It makes the firearm look like crap. Not cool at all. How are the firearms put together? Sights. I'll have to roll in a pitcher. But the Ruger has this little notch cut in right there. It definitely improves. This sight is far easier to pick up than the Heritage. Because it's not curved, it gives you more of a flat surface. I mean, there's still a little bit of curve there, but they milled it in. So instead of the sight being like this almost, it's more like this. You got a flat surface, easy to pick up. I like that a lot. The front blade... They're almost the sa same in width, same in height, and the same in length. Now the Ruger, on the screws that are recessed in, where you can't actually see the screws, they use sc star screws, which I like a lot because these screws are far easier to get out when they're really, really small. And then the screws that show flathead which gives you a more traditional style and then you got pins in the receiver one second let me grab another single action and see if that's how it's supposed to look now other single actions do use screws in the receivers i don't know i'll have to pull up some pictures of older colts and see if that's how it's supposed to be or see if it's supposed to be pins either which way i think the ruger looks better with the pins The Heritage uses flathead screws, more like a traditional single action, where you just got the screw head on one side, and then it looks like a pin on the other. They also use flathead screws for all, everything. So this will be a little bit more challenging for disassembly. The Heritage also uses a more standard, or a more traditional looking grip. It's got a little brass washer in there that looks really cool. The Ruger uses plastic grips. They don't look that bad. Now when you're loading and unloading, your heritage is more traditional. So what you're gonna do is go to half cock, then your cylinder can spin, then you got your little bar that pushes them out. There's no transfer bar on the heritage, which is probably why they got that external safety. Even with this external safety, I would probably, like if I was carrying this like horseback or something, I would probably still only go five and then one cylinder empty. The Ruger, you don't have to cock the hammer. You just got the load gate and that releases the cylinder. But the cylinder doesn't make the clicking sound. I like the clicking sound, so I prefer the Heritage setup over the Ruger. But the Ruger also has a transfer bar. What happens is when you pull the trigger, it puts the bar in front of the firing pin so then the hammer can hit it. If you let go of the trigger or you're not pulling the trigger, it moves the bar out of the way. So therefore, you don't need a safety and you can load this up completely, all six. On your ejector rod, the heritage is solid in the front. They must like just drill through this way. And then it's got a flat... A flathead screw that connects it. 
The Ruger, it looks like they take one piece and they drill it all the way through, and then they connect it. It's got a flathead screw, so that flathead screw looks cool. I almost kind of wish it was more solid like this one. That kind of makes it look just a little bit more traditional. The crown, the Ruger's got more of a target crown. It's just flat across. And this has got more of a traditional crown. Now that I'm looking at another single action, because it does appear that other single actions go all the way through, I'm going to think that the Ruger is better, just because it looks more traditional. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to give you the feel of the cowboy, because single actions are a very romantic firearm. Yeah, without a doubt, a modern semi-automatic will run circles around any single action. But when you pick this up and shoot it, not everybody can do it. So you have more of a special connection. It's it's funner to shoot. It's not just like bang, 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 switch out mags. Like, there's a process to it. You gotta learn it. The sights are a little bit more difficult to work. Like I said, more romantic. Taking them apart is basically the same on both of them. You push this little button over and you pull this pin out. The Heritage uses a knurled pin. I believe that's how it's pronounced. The Ruger uses more of a traditional style, just with a couple of grooves cut in there. Trigger break! Kind of a lot of creep on the Ruger. Creep, 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 as it's pushing the transfer bar into place, and then the hammer drops. There is creep on the Heritage, but not as much. I do like the Heritage trigger better. It feels a little bit more single action. The actual trigger of itself, the Ruger's looks kind of modern. It's cut out behind there. The Heritage is more traditional. Looks like other single actions with it all filled in. The writing and the stamping on it, the Heritage looks... Blah. It doesn't look very good. The Ruger has nice, clean, sharp lettering. It's got a black fill-in on it. Looks very nice. Overall, I think the finish and overall appearance of the firearm, the Ruger takes the cake. So what do I feel about these? Oh, also the heritage, how the grip goes on. It's more set in, kind of like a traditional single action. The Ruger, the metal actually sticks out past where the grips are. You know, maybe you can get some sort of aftermarket grip that it doesn't do that on anymore. But anyway, what do I feel of the two firearms and which one would I pick? I do feel in this particular case you're getting an extra $45 more of a firearm if you go with the Ruger. With that being said, these aren't junk. A lot of people buy them. Have we had one come back? No, I think we just had a Choppa come back that was broken. Otherwise, all the Heritage just go out the door and people keep them. Does that mean that they're just buying them and probably not shooting them? Yeah, I'm sure there's a percent. I mean, you got to remember the 80-20 factor. And this does seem more like an 80% firearm. What I mean by the 80-20 factor is 20% of the gun community do 80% of the shooting. 20% of the firearms do 80% of the shooting. 80% of the firearms only do 20% of the shooting. And I think this would be one that would be bought and it would go into the 80%. So this would only cover a very small amount of shooting. So the likelihood of it breaking is pretty low. The Ruger does feel like it's built better. Yes, it does have this release, and it does have a transfer bar. But for the purpose of this firearm, I still think it would do okay. I think either one would be a good buy. You are getting $45 more firearm, though, with the Ruger. I don't think it's a $45 wasted just towards the name. 
this does have that stupid safety. And this thing is going to get you at some point. It even got my dad once. I forget what the hell it was. It was like a raccoon or something got on the porch. They pull it out and it's like... What the hell's going on? Then he realized the safety was on. I prefer not having a safety on my single action. Just because that's the style of firearm it is. So I like the Ruger over that, and that's probably why I would actually lean towards the Ruger. But the Ruger doesn't quite hit the single action feel, feel as well as the Heritage does. Even the cylinder just don't, well, uh, it kind of goes with the finish. I don't know, I just think the Heritage hits the single action feel a little bit better, but the Ruger I do feel is a better firearm, about $45 better. So I would actually pick the Ruger. Leave in the comments below which one you would pick and why. If you'd like to check out any of my other videos, click on the links up here. If you'd like to help support the channel, I got my Patreon. I also got affiliate links in the description down below. Even if you don't buy what the link is for, just click it on that link and then doing the Amazon shopping you were going to do anyway and a little kickback for it because you went there off of my channel. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.